welcome again. Thanks for the emails in the previous video. This video I'm going to do a short presentation again using Multigo and this time to analyze cell phone records. In this example we're going to use the cell phone records in Multigo um, with the view of complementing your data with OSINT data. So we have a spreadsheet with the dates of calls, times of calls, your subject or your suspect's um, cell phone number, your IMEI number, which you can use at times, duration of calls, calling numbers, called numbers, SMSs in and out. Um, and then you've got a, a column of codes, which is tower codes, and then you've got your, your tower um, names. So we're going, like in the previous video, we're going to import the spreadsheet in. First thing we do is neaten it up a little bit, select the spreadsheet. Um, I generally choose the tree option. You can always change it later. Select all your um, columns, unmap them, because we don't need all of them just yet. It will clutter up your graph as well if you select all of them. So we select the date. Um, that will help forming a um, timeline to, to the calls. You can select times, but just realize one thing. If you've got a lot of calls, you're going to have a lot of times, which will cause the graph to become very cluttered. You can select the IMEI number. Um, it's nice when you've got a suspect that uh, switches between cell phones, so you can see which SIM card was used with which, which phone, if, it, if they use different phones. Now we select our relevant numbers, your incoming calls, your outgoing calls. Incoming SMSs, outgoing SMSs. And then we select our tower data. And this we make, um, in Multigo, we use the location um, entity for the towers. Okay, now we just need to set up our graph correctly. You go into the connection or the links, select them all, delete them. And we must set the links correctly, otherwise you're just going to get a graph with a whole lot of arrows going in one direction that is just not going to make sense to anybody. So referring back to the original Excel spreadsheet, the different columns will tell us which calls were made. In other words, incoming calls or outgoing calls. Um, also the call type column will tell us. Those are the little identifiers. And what I found in my experience, each cell phone or service provider has different little um, call type coding so you just got to work through them and and get an understanding for them and this will help us put it all together at the end of the day okay so now we set it up we've got incoming calls to the suspects number and then we've got outgoing calls incoming sms's and outgoing sms's and then Importantly now, because we want to track locations for each call and SMS made to and from the suspect's phone, you've got to link the location to the numbers calling or being called, because that will set it up correctly. And now I map columns to links. And what this does is it gives each directional arrow a label. So you select the call type, because that's how we want to identify it. And in the drop-down um, column, you select the call type direction. In other words, incoming call, outgoing call. And this will label each arrow. And it just makes the graph read a little bit easier when you go into deeper analysis of it. Okay, we import it. Don't change any of the settings here. And we hit it. And it should all come out okay. So we select finish, our graph comes out into Multigo, it's in circular. Depending on what I'm doing, I don't particularly like circular. And I select the hierarchy graph format. This gives us a better presentation of the data. Right in the middle, you see our subject phone. Everything links back towards the subject's phone. You can test the links select various entities you can see whether it's incoming or outgoing for example if we click on this call uh, it, it will tell us the location 
of our subject at the time of the call. This one as well. So when he received calls from this number, he was at two different locations. And so you can go through various examples of this. But what I want to now do is give this some more context. And here we can use what I call the different bubbles. See straight away we have different size bubbles. The bubbles in size are increased by the number of calls or locations that the subject was at at that given time. His bubble of his number is the biggest obviously because he's primary to this whole investigation. And then as you go through the graph you get different sized bubbles in relation to either locations or to calls. So it's another useful way of analyzing your data in the graph. Perturva, the developers of Multigo have removed the transforms that one could search against specific databases, in this case numbers against the database to identify the ownership. Anyway, we select all our locations by entity type, we move them down, leave them selected, now we select the table format and we just export those that we have selected. Leave the settings and change them if necessary and then we export them to CSV. Give your file a name, save it, leave this, uh, the settings should remain the same and save. And once done we can return to our graph. Multigo is exported into CSV. It's removed all the duplicate data because this is a list of all our towers and you can have duplicates. We just need to tidy this up a little bit because we're going to batch ge geolocate all these um, towers to give us some sort of um, location map as to the movement of our subject. Okay, so we've tidied the data up. We've removed all the underscores and the tower descriptions and so forth. And we've just got a list of location names which we're going to work with now. To do this... We go to mapdevelopers.com, we copy and paste our list of names, okay, and then we go to the bottom and find addresses. Click that and it will start running. It takes a while, so through the power of video, video editing, I am now going to shorten this process. Okay, and we're done. We're going to copy and paste that back into Excel. Fantastic. Now we've got a list of names and their GPS coordinates. And all we have to do now is also link them back to the correct tower name. And you'll see why just in a moment. So we select our tower list, the original list that we exported from Multigo. We copy that and we paste it to the corresponding name. It's a little bit of a long way around, but it's, it's easier when this is a more manual method than writing a bunch of transforms in Python and if you don't have that experience then this is the way to do it but it goes quickly eventually what we now have to also do is just combine the two GPS your longitudes and your latitudes into one column just follow the code as I've done it here in the video in your own Excel and that will combine the GPS coordinates because Multigo will if you import it back into Multigo as is, it will see it as two different entities and that's just going to cause a whole problem. So just copy the code and full, complete the columns and paste it in there and you've combined your latitudes and your longitudes into one column and Multigo will be a lot happier with that. Okay, we're done. Go back to Multigo. We're now going to import the graph like we did before. Next, select our table or our CSV file, sorry, select tree, select our columns and unmap them. And it's going to be a lot simpler this time around. Select location. It's important here to select location. You want the same entity as in your original graph. And you'll see that why again very shortly. We select our GPS coordinates and we provide them with the GPS um, entity. And you go through the same process again. This will, there's no changes here. It's a lot simpler. And import the graph into Multigo. Leave the settings. And Multigo will create a new graph. 
you can just double check it you've got location and you've got the gps entity included in this graph displace your graph that you can see the the graph clearly select all your entity entities and copy that now we go back to our original graph and we paste it in there and here's the trick because now we've got to merge all the locations as per the original graph and you just have to set it once and it will sort them all out you can just select it at the bottom and it will do it automatically for you if i just click correctly and there we got it all the gps locations have now been included in the graph attached to the relevant location now we're going to manipulate those gps locations select them all by type move them down and now we can start to do further analysis on the graph select the locations bring them down as well and we'll run some transforms on these for example we can run the open locations transform so it'll give us another location result which we can then compare to our original tower location and it can assist with um, possibly more accurate geolocations but this is not we mustn't confuse this with cell phone forensic analysis in terms of triangulation and so on you can also do other search functions like tweets in the area it gives you a better feel as to what's going on um, and so on and so forth it really opens up the options for further analysis the twitter transforms you can also do geolocation of of various tweets you can also find identify the user followers of the user but the other great thing is to enhance your osint is the original excel csv spreadsheet that you did those gps points you can now import into google earth i prefer using google earth because it's localized i'm not going via any um, cloud server or other things i know one can use fusion tables um, and so forth on on google maps but i prefer to localize this data in case it's sensitive so we import that csv into google earth and it takes us to the the general location of most of those points we can find them and you've got to activate that csv in google earth to make it um, come up you'll see the different points now and if you click on them you get the name you get the gps location in your original csv file you can add a bunch of other data such as dates and times and all sorts of things to enhance your um, end result and the way your d information looks Thanks again for watching. Please don't hesitate to contact us if you need any further assistance or help or suggestions. Be good to hear from you. Thanks, guys.